and welcome to another episode of Motors for the Masses. And today we are looking at what thrills you can have for under £6,000. So what options do you have? Well, you could go for one of these. A 1.8 litre, 124 brake horsepower, 2007 Mazda MX-5. Now these have a 0 to 60 time of around nine and a half seconds and a top speed of 122 miles an hour. Or seven and a half seconds if you go for the 157 brake horsepower two litre model. Or you could go for one of these. A 2014 Smart 4.2 with 71 brake horsepower and a 1 litre engine. 0 to 60 time is no idea, because let's be honest, if you want fun, why would you? Or you could go for one of these. A 2011 Renault Megane Coupe. But though it is a diesel, and to be honest, it's a bit of a Renault. There is, of course, a much more exciting option, and that is this, the 2005 Nissan 350Z. So what's it like to drive? Well, let's find out. So inside, you can see, it's a very sporty little car. But the best thing about it, is that. Despite being 12 years old, you'd never know it. It's got the multifunction steering wheel and uh, the three little pods on the dashboard to give you your volts, your oil pressure and your trip meter. The functions for that are also on here and then if you ever need it, the traction control off switch is down here. Not that you should ever turn that off unless, of course, you're on a track day. And then, of course, as long as you've got the appropriate insurance for a track day. Now, I have been known for not liking two-seater sports cars. However, <laughs> this is a different thing altogether. You still get all the creature comforts of a modern luxury car. You've got the stereo made by Bose, which is cassette and CD. You've got air conditioning. You've got heated seats. You've got electric seats. You've got electric windows. You've got electric folding mirrors. You've got all the electronics you could possibly want in a car. You've got very comfortable figure-hugging seats. But of course, the best thing is what you've got under the bonnet. And that... Sounds lovely. I have to say, and this is a great little gearbox as well. The gears are very precise, the way it goes into the gears, very nice indeed. There's no wobbling about. It's a great little gearbox. When you change gear at speed, there's no notches, it's just clump, straight in, clump, straight in, clump, straight in. Great. It doesn't feel like a typical two-seater, which means you don't have 
very cramped cabin. It's a very spacious place to be, even though it does have two seats and there's no option obviously for a rear seat because it's just cross member and boot. It's very nice indeed. I'm very happy in it. And even though it doesn't have a glove box, you do have little compartments in the back here and one in the dashboard that you can store stuff in. And then behind your seat, you've got two speakers and then behind the passenger seat, another two speakers. The good thing about this being a 2004 car means that the tax is still only £295 a year. Whereas if you went to the 06 model, you're looking at £515 a year. And I have to say, the traction control does a fantastic job because when you stick it in a corner and put your foot down, it just sticks to the road. You get a tiny little bit of a wiggle, but then the traction control says, no, we don't think so. So these came with the three and a half litre V6 engine. This develops 276 brake horsepower and has a 0 to 60 time of 5.7 seconds, which is not bad at all. It's got rear wheel drive and it has six manual gears. Now these were made up to 2009 and then replaced with the 370Z, which has a 3.7 litre V6, obviously really, with 326 brake horsepower and a 0 to 60 of around 5.2 seconds. However, you would have to find another 5,000 pounds on top of a 350Z price. And I'm not sure it's worth it for a half a second faster. I mean, okay, yes, fair enough, it does have some suspension upgrades, but even so, is it really worth another five grand? You know, I'd rather stick with this. Now, as I said, the 370Z is a little bit more powerful and a little bit quicker, but it's only half a second to 60 quicker. They have 295 brake horsepower, or 308 brake horsepower for the GT model. It's not actually that much difference. The only problem with having that much extra power means it's going to be a later model, probably an 06 onwards up to 2009. And then you're going to be paying twice as much road tax. Uh, these are limited to 155 miles an hour top end, and they do have 268 pounds foot of torque, which means it's pretty nippy. And as we all know, the more talk you have, the more fun you have. Now these cars do come with faults, especially a car that's 12 years old. However, I am happy to report that I don't seem to find the common faults in this car. One of them being a squeaky seat. And I don't find any squeaks whatsoever. Another more serious problem that these tend to have is clicking drive shafts and again this doesn't have that problem another common issue found on these cars is the airbag light stays on and again i'm happy to report the airbag light went off when i started the car in this so that's all good another one is the poor window seals now when you get up to a bit of speed you get wind blowing through the seals on the window up to about 40 mile an hour so far, I haven't had any issues and when we get on the dual carriageway, I will check whether it does it up to 70 miles an hour. At 70 miles an hour, there's no wind noise. Of course, anything over that, I am unable to check at this moment in time. And I do have to say, the view looking out of this lovely angular door mirror over that rear wheel arch is lovely. Now being a two-seater sports car doesn't mean it's small. It's 4.3 meters long, 1.3 meters high, and 1.8 meters wide, which is similar to a lot of saloon cars these days. And another serious one is the boot struts, and they tend to sag as they do over the years. But again, this one is fine. Furthermore, the fuel cap. Because it's electronic, you push a button down here, it's supposed to flip open, and this one, again, is okay. So if you want some serious grin factor, 
£6,000 is all you need. With a bit of rear wheel drive, you can't go far wrong. So that brings us to the end of this episode of Motors for the Masses. Thank you very much for joining us. Please come back next time when we'll have some more cars for you. Until then, please drive carefully, but have fun. Bye-bye.